Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. It is good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. 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 Just realizing and knowing the privilege it is to be able to walk through those doors under the power of your own two feet. Amen. It is a blessing. And whether you was willed to be, it is also a blessing just to be in the house Amen. of the Lord. Amen. Some people at home, the other places, they wish they could be here. Amen. But you are fortunate enough that you're able to walk through those doors and that each day Amen. that you're able to breathe and give God praise. It's a good day. Amen. So this morning, like any other morning, we just going to worship and thank God for all that he has done because God has truly been good. Amen? Amen. 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 God has kept us from so many things, things to seen and unseen. That's right. And he is worthy of our praise. So this morning, regardless of what you're going through, your hearts may be heavy, but let's lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. Because there are benefits when we praise the Lord. Amen. There are great things in store for all of those who believe. God is going to take care of us because we are in his care. Amen. We are his sheep. Of his pastor. Amen. He's going to supply all of our needs. Amen. Amen. Let us worship the Lord.
Good morning. We are in the house of the Lord. Come on in the house. Amen. I rose to do the welcome. Welcome you to our loving church, Bethlehem. Did all of you leave your worries at the door? Yes. Before you came in? Yes. Yes. <laughs> we know this is a place of peace. A place to gather together and share in all the blessings we are given and are still going to receive. Amen. So everybody stand up, walk, and shake someone's hand and welcome them this morning. Amen. 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 Well, then they're going to come forward and do the offering. Well, 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 Amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. welcome.
Lord, to be when I'm when, when I'm already gone. Yes. Amen. Amen. Lord, we know your word is true. Lord, we thank Amen. you for your word. Amen. Lord, we have been in this room many things you said. So able us to get on board, Lord, on one accord. Yes. And Lord, give. You said give and it may be given. And Lord, you told us that you would open up a window to heaven for us. Yes. 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 Lord, I know you would do that, Lord. I've yes. been blessed so many times, Lord. I yes. thought I'd been out, you brought me back.
in his prayer time. There may be someone that you know that may be going through something. There may be someone laying on that bed of affliction. There may be someone whose heart is burdened and is heavy. And there just be simply be someone who just going through some things and just don't know what to pray for. Or it could just be you, yourself, that's just dealing with things that life brings. And sometimes you don't always know the answer. But the Bible says that we can go to God with all of our cares. And he will hear us and answer our call. This morning, we're going to have Deacon Jefferson who's going to come and render our altar call prayer. You can come at this time. I have some good days. I'll have some Somebody somewhere, need a blessing right now, Jesus. Yes. They'll have food on a 
can't tell you what that is. We ask you to be the food that they need. Somebody, somewhere, Jesus, don't have shoes on their feet. We ask you to grant them shoes for the kids. Uh, somebody laid down last night, Jesus, and the eyes just didn't come over this way. We ask you to hold your arms around her family and their love.
many know that Jesus lives. Amen. Amen. I am grateful for the things that you have done. Yes, I'm grateful for the victories we won. Sit up on the bed. 
sees people in the room. She puts them out the room. Get up, put a do-rag on her head, throw on her apron, tell Jesus and the guests, have a seat at the table. And she begins to wait on them. She begins to serve them. That is one way we are able to tell God thank you is by serving others. When you serve others, you serve God. Jesus spoke of the final judgment in the Gospel of Matthew, the 25th chapter. Around the 31st verse, it reads like this. It says, but when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit upon his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered in his presence. And he will separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. It goes on to say that then the king will say to those on the right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, and have the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you cared for me. I was a prisoner, and you visited me. Then these righteous ones who reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and gave you something to drink? Or a stranger and showed you hospitality? Or naked and gave you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will say, I'll tell you the truth. When you did it, to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you did it unto me. When you serve us, you serve God. One of the greatest commandments God gave us, before Jesus left, he told us to what? Love one another. Love is not always by the words that you say, by the actions that you do. We are to care and see out of one another. And when we care and see out of one another, we put a smile on God's face. Why do we serve Him? There are very many reasons why we serve Him, but there are very few that I just want to mention. I want four things I want to mention to us why we serve Him. The reason why we serve him is number one, we serve him out of gratitude. We serve God out of a heart of thanksgiving for the many great things that he has done for us. We continually show our thanksgiving to God by the work we do helping others. When you're thankful, you don't mind giving up some of your time to serve others. All right, all right. Service is not a convenience for you. All right. You don't mind doing it because it's in your heart to do it. All right. Some folks won't carve out time to serve anybody. Mm. They love to be served, mm. but don't want to serve. All right. All right. We are to follow the example of our Savior Amen. by doing for others. That's how people identify you as a child of God, by the things that you do. We owe God so much for what he has done for us that we cannot afford to pay. But we can pay God's generosity forward by serving and helping someone else with the heart of thanksgiving. One of the ways we show that I am a child of God is by serving someone else with gratitude. All right. Not so much that I'm looking to be recognized or to get a pat on the back, but I'm doing it from my heart because I know what God has done for me. That thing called paying it for. Do something good for someone else because someone has done something good for you. If it had not been for 
the goodness and the generosity of others, someone to show me the way, we would, some of them would still be lost. Someone did a good deed, a good act, to show me the light of Christ, Amen. that they were a child of his. Yeah. Sometimes we don't always know where our blessings are going to come from or who they're going to come from. Yeah. That's all right. That's all right. God can touch anybody to help you. Yeah. Sometimes our help comes from sources that we never would even imagine. Yeah. From people that we wouldn't even thought was capable of even helping us. Yeah. God is able to use anybody who is willing to be used. And we show our thankfulness to God by doing in kind, by helping somebody else. Here it is. Jesus has walked in this home of Peter to help his mother-in-law touch her in her sickness. And she gets up immediately and go and wait on him and the other guests. Amen. She could have easily stayed in her bed and said, Lord, I sure thank you. Uh, and could have just been laying there and resting. Uh, yes. But she got up yeah. and waited on the Lord. All right, all right. She showed how thankful she was by the work that she was doing. Amen. She got up and waited on him. There's nothing like going to one of your favorite restaurants mm. and your waiter is very attentive to your needs. Uh -huh. yeah. Soon as you drink the last little bit of sweet tea or salt, whatever you have, they come right there with a pitch of corn and fill in your glass right back up. Mm -hmm. You say, ooh, they don't serve us today. They doing it. Mm -hmm. And out of your heart, you have to graciously tip them well for the service that they are rendering. Right. Everyone wants good service. Yeah. Even God wants good service okay. from us. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody wants a bad wait. Right. Nobody has to want to wait on their order or wait to be served. Mm -hmm. But this woman immediately got up from her sickbed mm -hmm. and went into serving the Lord. Yeah. And the other guests with it. That says something about her heart. All right. Says that she was willing to do what was necessary to serve him and thank him with gratitude right. by waiting on him and the others. Secondly, we serve him out of honor. We honor God by serving others with dignity and respect. Jesus said him on his own self in Matthew 20 and 20, he said, The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for men. We honor him by following his example. He left us an example to follow that we are to serve. We are to serve mankind and humanity. One of the greatest lessons he left for his disciples was when he washed his disciples' feet. He says in John 13, he said, If I, then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done. During those times, if you are an affluent person, you had a servant, that when you or your guests walked in the home, that that servant would get down on his knees and wash his master and their guests' feet. But Jesus was showing them something much greater. Whether you had much or little, that you being a person of who you are were able to get down and wash the feet of your neighbor. Putting yourself on an equal plane field. That there's no big eyes, no little use, but we all are one. So that I'm able to get down and honor you by washing your feet. Amen. Jesus left them this example to follow that they are to serve one another. Amen. See, the disciples had this thing in their mind that well, they want to know who was the greatest. Lord, who going to sit on your right hand and on your left? Yes. And Jesus was saying to them, can't you drink from the cup that I have to drink from? Right. 
can you go through what I'm going to go through? But he chose this lesson to show them that your main focus ought to be serving one another than to be worried about who's going to be in position. Service is what the Lord wants from us. We esteem God by the service we render to others. This is how we show respect and admiration for him. Looking out for God's people. Amen. Serving and helping those who are unable to help themselves. Amen. When people we serve are not gracious toward us for the service that we have rendered, remember that your service is not done unto them, but it's done unto the Lord. Amen. We do it to please Him. Amen. And if we satisfy Him, we're able to satisfy others whether they thank us or not. Amen. Amen. A lot of times the work that we do there would not be much fanfare or a pat on the back. Uh -huh. But to simply get the joy of knowing that I've done a good deed, Amen. that my Lord may be pleased with me. Amen. My goal is to make sure that the Lord is satisfied with me Amen. by the service that I render. Amen. Not that I'm looking to be paid, not that I'm looking to be recognized for, Amen. but I'm doing it from my heart Amen. because the Lord has called me to serve. Amen. The third way we serve him is out of relationship. There is nothing like being in relationship with the Lord. To know him personally, his likes and his dislikes. To have the satisfaction of knowing what pleases the Lord. There's nothing like going to your favorite restaurant and there's a waiter there that knows you knows what you like to drink, knows the entrees that you like, and they already know exactly how you like it. Amen. Call you by name and say, I'll be right out with you, and I know exactly what you want. Amen. That's his service. Amen. That is a person who is very attentive Amen. to the needs of the guests that they are serving. Amen. That's how we ought to be when it comes to God when we serve him. Amen. Amen. We should know what God expects of us and what he likes. Right. And we ought to serve him with the things that pleases him. Amen. Amen. He serves us. So why not serve him with the things that he likes? Amen. The things that he loves. Amen. The more we know him, the better we can serve him. Amen. Amen. That's why relationship is important. Amen. In order to know him, you know exactly what he likes. When the relationship is strong, there are benefits in store for those who serve God. In a relationship with God, one finds forgiveness, intimacy, protection, guidance, and purpose, and so much more. Forgiveness for our troubles and our past mistakes. Intimacy for a closer and deeper connection with him protection from evil and all those who will come against God's will, yes. guidance from the Holy Spirit to direct our path, Amen. and purpose for to have meaning in the work that we do within this dark world. Amen. With relationship with God, He gives us so much more that we sometimes we can't even fathom all the benefits that are in store Amen. for those who serve Him. For those who serve the Lord will lack no good thing. No good thing. God is a great tip. He gives you more than the service that you bring. Lastly, we serve him out of love. Jesus said, well, first John, Peter wrote this, he says, excuse me, John wrote this in first John 4 and 19, he says, we love him because he first loved us. To love him is to serve him. He loved us by looking past our shortcomings to meet our needs. We serve others with the same compassion. With the love that Christ loved us with. How can I say I love God but I hate my brother? I make him out to be alive. But if I love him, I have to love like him. And I love like him 
by serving others with the same love that he loved me with. Amen. God looked beyond my shortcomings, my past sins, my faults, saw my needs, and met my needs out of love for me. That's how we ought to help one another. Not look at somebody's past or what they done or what they used to do. But look beyond that to see the potential of what God is trying to do in their lives and where God is going to take them. Sometimes you have to see a person's future before they even see it. Speak life into them and their God-given talent that they have. That they may become the person that God has called them to. And you show that to them by serving them with love, with kindness, with forgiveness. Sometimes we can't do that because we're too busy hating on one another. But God has not called us unto hate and judgment, but he called us unto love. 1 John 4 and 21, he said this, And this commandment I have from him, that he who loved God must love his brother also. That's right. We have been called to love one another. That is the best way we can serve God, is through love. Love one another. Jesus is in his own words in John 15. He said, this is my commandment. That we love one another as I have loved you. Pray to love. Has no one with this. Then the lay down one's life for his friends. He says, you are my friends if you do whatever I command you. He loved you so much. Before you even came to know him, he called you his friend. And he gave his life for you. He died for you. Gave his life as a ransom. He served humanity by dying to free us. Gave his life for you and I. That we might have this same opportunity, this same love that was shown to Calvary. That he showed unto the world. That we, being his fathers, fellow believers, will take this same love and share it with those who do not know him. All right, all right. Some people spend their whole life running away from love. Because they've never been shown the proper way or how to be loved. That's why it's important that we serve one another to show them the real meaning of love. Right. Not that I'm looking at what you have done or what you did not do. Amen. Because I love you, I'm going to speak life into you. Right. So you can be the full potential that God has called you to be. Right. We have to serve one another with love. Right. When you think about all the things that God has brought you from. Amen. All the things he has saved you from. Yes. And how he turned your life around. Yes. In spite of all this, all that stuff, when you know you was unworthy of it, yes. he didn't bring it up before you. Yes. He didn't say, wait, since you did this, I ain't going to do that. But no, he said what? My son, my daughter, your sins are forgiven. Right. Go and sin no more. Amen. He didn't hold our past against us. Neither should we hold our past against someone else. But our love serve them. Show them that God loves them by being that light that he has called you to. Yes. Yes, sir. Because if he was able to suffer for my sake, yes. be hung up on the cross, yes, he did. have nails put in his hands and in his feet, right. to stand on that cross when he could have easily come down. Uh -huh. But he stayed there until the work was complete. Yes. And he uttered with his own voice, it is finished. Yes, and he died And they took him down and placed him in a bar or two. Yes. When he laid there for three nights in the grave. But early on Sunday morning, God raised him with all power from the grave. God got him up with all power and authority. And because he loved us so, he told us, go out, make more disciples. Teach them what I've taught you. And do it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. 
we have been compelled to go out and serve one another. To teach them God's way, to show them the proper way to love one another. It's by serving one another. Peter's mother-in-law taught us a great lesson. There are going to be things that God is going to do for us. And we don't have the money or the means to pay God for all that he has done. But what we can do, we can pay it forward by doing the work that God has called us to by serving each other. There may be someone in your family who just need a little love. Amen. They may be battling with some things, yeah. but you showing love to them <coughs> will show them that, hey, at least somebody cares enough about me yeah. to see about me. Right. It may be a name or a friend. Yeah. Your name could be in their house, smiling and waving at you, but then they got no food in their cup. All right. Right. But then you go out and buy groceries and the Lord just put this on my heart and do for you. You ain't got to do it in front of a bunch of people, just do it from your heart. Yes. We never know who we're going to touch by the things that we do. As we learned this morning in our Sunday school lesson, it's more than about just being a talk, but you got to walk what you talk about. If you're going to talk about it, you got to be about it. Live the life that you speak. Be an example. Peter's mother-in-law gave us a great example. Yes, he healed her, but she arose up and she waited on him. She served him. We have to do the same thing in God. We can start today by serving the Lord, by giving our lives to him. There may be someone here today who do not know him in the part of their sins. And this morning you can know him as your Lord and Savior. Serve him by giving him your life. Because when you give him your life, this is only the beginning. It's just a start on this side. But when you give him your life on this side, you're preparing yourself for the life that is to come on the other side. When you we will be with him perpetually, a, a place that he has already prepared for us. For well, he said it is over that he is coming back. That where he is, we may be also. Amen. Will that be one this morning? If you desire to come, you can come by letter. Yes. By Christian experience, or as a candidate for baptism, by having you choose to come, you can come. Amen. Serve him by giving him your life. And then serve him more by helping someone else. You can come this morning. With every one. Amen. God bless you.
morning again. Good morning. Rise and give an honor to God who's the head of my life and who's the head of the church. To Pastor Turner and our congregation, these are our announcements. On the third Sunday of this month, July, at 12 o'clock, we will have our Women's Auxiliary Program. We're asking everyone to participate and please wear purple. It starts at 12 o'clock and a little brunch will be served afterwards. Uh, the guest church is Bright Hope CPCA Church. The National uh, Permanent Baptist Convention will be in Birmingham, Alabama this year. That's July the 21st through July the 26th. The Archive Committee still needs all members to turn in their family history and your family pictures. Mother Robbins, I asked her today to cut off this next Sunday. She is the chairperson. Uh, Bethlehem, our annual revival will be Tuesday, July 30th through Friday, August the 1st. Each night starting at 7 p.m. Tuesday night is Elder Darren Jones from St. John PB Church in Winchester, Tennessee. And the Bethlehem Sanctuary Choir will be singing. Wednesday night, July 31st will be Pastor Buford Moore from St. Andrew PB Church, and the Bone family will be singing. Thursday night, August the 1st, will be Pastor Sean Moore from St. Bonner PB Church, and the Mount Zion Mail Chorus will be singing. August 9th, that Friday, through the 11th, will be the Sunday School Convention and BTU Congress at the Tabernacle. That Friday night, August the 9th, at 6 o'clock, the Bethlehem Church family is in charge of the song service. That's on that Friday night. Please start giving your tribal money. And on the fourth Sunday in August, that will be Pastor and Sister Turner's third anniversary here with us at Bethlehem Church. Another communication. Triana CP Church in America, in Triana, Alabama, the pastor is Reverend James Childress. Their song revival is July 8th through the 10th, 6.30 p.m. nightly. That Monday night, the guest speaker is Reverend Leon Gray, Triana CP Church in America. Tuesday night, Reverend David Bitts, Little Zion MB Church. Wednesday night, Reverend Darius Holden, Mount Zion. MB Church. Please remember to pray for the sick and the shut in. And we're praying for Deacon Billy Ray Matthews. He had an emergency. He had to leave today. Sister Jesse Turner, pastor's mother. She's in Madison Hospital on 72. Her room number is 423. Uh, Ms. Linda Howard. She's Talisa's mother, and uh, Mother Robbins gave her name for us to pray for her. Brother Joe Vance will be having surgery July 11th at the hospital, Maine Hospital. And Brother Cornelius, this is Mother Marie Sutherland's grandson. He's been having a lot of seizures, and he has to go back to um, Vanderbilt Hospital July the 10th. Additional names are Deacon Ezell Williams, Brother F.E. Rogers, Sister Bernice Thompson, Sister Bernice Thatch, can you stand please? So good to see you, amen. amen. Sister Lily Rice, Brother Mickey Malone, Brother Turner Rogers, Brother Michael Vance, Sister Hazel Fletcher, Elder Robinson, Sister Ariel Sandifer, Brother Lyndon Harris, Brother Maggie Vance, Sister Minnie Lewis, Reverend David Steele, Sister Lucy Harris, Brother Paris Catmore, Sister Louise Cogborn, Sister Ella Parham, Sister Martha Grissom, and Sister Deborah Walton. Bible class is every Wednesday at 6 o'clock via conference call. We can be heard later on Facebook at Bethlehem PB Church and on YouTube at Bethlehem PB Church, Greenbrier, Alabama. And our motto for Bethlehem Church is, we are a loving church that strives to uplift, enrich, 
and serve our community through God's great commission. And uh, if we have any guests with us today, if you'd like to stand, please do so. You give us your name and your church family if you like. If there are guests present, you do not wish to stand. On behalf of Bethlehem, we be church family and Pastor Turner. We say welcome, welcome, welcome. And on July the 5th, uh, Elder Robinson and Mother Robinson celebrated 64 years of marriage. Amen. 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 Everyone be blessed.